in the US, it's a, it's a problem. The people come up for promotion, people say, how many first author papers in science does this person have? Mm -hmm. uh, how many citations? Um, that is madness. I'm, I don't agree with this policy, but I tend to publish only in the most high, the highest impact journals because my postdocs yeah. say they can't get a job if they don't do that. Yeah. They will be ignored. So I think, but I think, you know, I know that exists, and I'm trying to speak out against it because I can afford to. I was director of uh, President Memorial Sloan Kettering for 10 years, and while I was at Sloan Kettering, we did away with that kind of evaluation process, which depends on looking at a CV and how many first author and last authored papers in these high impact journals. Um, and uh, we went to a system that I didn't invent, actually, in, it's been practiced other places, especially by the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. All that counts in the biosketch, you can list all your papers if you want, but what really counts is your five most important contributions to science. I believe that one way we can deal with the, the really unfortunate influences of certain journals and the editorial process that slows down dissemination of new knowledge is to make use of preprints the way the physicists do. These servers allow you to put your work up early. You don't need to wait one to two years before the work is available to the scientific community. It's one of the most commonly expressed um, concerns I hear when I go and talk to graduate students at U.S. universities is that they're basically waiting for, they've been in graduate school for six years already or seven years, and they say they can't graduate until uh, they have a paper appear in some distinguished journal. Uh, and my view is that if they've finished the work, they ought to post it on a preprint server, get credit for it, and move on to the next stage. We're not throwing journals out, <laughs> okay. right? We're keeping journals uh, for the time being. <laughs> well, we'll see. You know, in the physics, uh, the physics community, the journals still exist. Not everybody publishes there because it depends on who they are and what okay, they yeah. need. Mm -hmm. um, but we're, you know, we've got to take some chances with this dynamic yeah. because we're killing ourselves by the way we behave. Peer review is, a, in general, a pretty good thing. That is, having people criticize your work and say why it's right or wrong, how it could be better expressed, those are all good things. Um, but there are a lot of fundamental questions about peer review that, uh, that nevertheless have to be raised. The first is when we should do it. So um, there, there are several kinds of options. One is the kind of review that goes on when I write a paper and I send it off to Daniel, I say, you, you tell me what you think of this and look at this figure, I'm a little concerned about this. And that's just, you know, that's, that is peer review and it's probably the best form of peer review. As this, what we've all come to is we see peer review as a gateway. You've got to get past the peer reviewers uh, to get into a, into a prestigious journal. And that's what has become rather poisonous because um, journals, uh, give instructions to their peer reviewers, you know, be tough with these papers. Students learn fairly early on that uh, this is a very, very tough world, that it may be more important to get your paper into a high impact journal than it is to make an exciting discovery you want to talk to your friends about. That's discouraging. When I started out, uh, you know, I had no real ambitions about doing science, but I learned that it was really fun to do an experiment and talk to your friends about it and publish it. I didn't care where it was published. 